What is up and welcome to the latest edition of the Bruin Bible. Will Decker here with my main man, the madman in the building, my co-host. Madman, we got a very, very special guest in the house. This guy, I think, is going to be the leader of the UCLA secondary for years to come. A guy that we've tabbed as kind of the next big one coming from UCLA. And he took some time out of his busy schedule to come speak with us. We're so honored. Our guy, Devin Kirkwood. D, how are you doing today, brother? I'm doing good today. How are you? Dude, we're doing great, man. Uh, we're excited to kind of dive into your football history, what got you into the game, what got you to Sarah High School. You know, a lot of legendary players played there. What got you to UCLA, kind of some of your inspiration with football. But first, we got to do an ad read. Our ad read for this week is Bet Online. Uh, it's the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports development, including this year's basketball championship finals. Uh, the Stanley Cup Finals, Major League Baseball, all that, and even next season's early NFL futures. Bet online where the game starts. Make sure to check that out. D, I'm very interested to see where your love of the game started because we see the like the product that's still developing and still kind of going out there. As you made, you know, one of your dreams come true, playing Division One football at a high level. Was there a moment in time that sparked your interest in the game or, you know, memory in your past where you're like, right there, that's when I fell in love with the game of football? Uh, When I first really, like, fell in love with football, it was when I was, like, three. I was walking in the park with my mom, and first football was supposed to be like a, My mom put me in football for, like, a punishment. I really didn't like sports growing up. When I was young, I didn't like playing sports. I just liked being at the house and being with my mom. <laughs> and when she put me in football, when she put me in football as a punishment, she thought I was gonna go out there first day and then just not like it. I ended up having a blast. It was like my first day running away, running around the park and having fun with like all the kids around my age. But I was still like they were around my age, but a little older than me. So it was fun to me. So and I'm a very and I was a very competitive person. So my best moment for what, what made me really fall in love with football to get me to start just playing was when I started when I went out for my first practice for the Inglewood Jets. And I played offensive line at that time. Oh man. <laughs> How the positions have changed, my dude. So you it's safe to say that you grew up playing the game of football at an early age, five to six years old going out there, you're playing Pop Warner, doing stuff like that, Inglewood Jets. You, it comes time to high school, man, and I know you were probably a kid that was tabbed to, like, wanting to go to multiple different schools. A lot of coaches probably looking to get you in their program. Sarah High, I mean, when I think of Sarah High, the first thing I think of is football. You have your Robert Woods, your Adoree Jacksons. You know, you probably grew up watching these players play. You know what I mean? What made Sarah High the destination for you at the end of the day, to play your high school football? Uh, let's see. Sarah High School was, wasn't my first destination. Oh. I really didn't want to go to Sarah. I wanted to go to, like, Bosco or Cathedral. Yeah. At the moment, Bosco was talking to me really a lot about coming to the school and saying I have a bright future. So I believed and I wanted to go to Bosco. But... What drew me to Sarah at the last moment was it was like most of my teammates from Inglewood, I played for the Inglewood just my last year of Pop Warner. So all my friends and teammates was going to Inglewood, and Inglewood was like a feeder in the Sarah, supposedly. Oh. So, and I talked with Coach Hall, and he was telling me, like, Devin, you have a chance to be, be like one of the big name players coming out of high school. And I didn't believe him, but I was just like, the drive isn't that far. And all my friends are going there. So I feel like Sarah would be the best. And then also all the, the legacy Sarah has. So I'm like, all right, I'd love to, I'd love to be a part of it. So I just chose to go to Sarah. And it was, it was the right decision for me. Awesome, man. Well, you know, you had a, an illustrious high school football career. You racked up the offers, man. Uh, you know, USC, Michigan, Notre Dame, you could have played – for a lot of different schools, you had some, you know, All-American games come your way during the process. At the end of the day, man, what made it UCLA for you uh, at the next level? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, 
UCLA. UCLA was my dream school. I loved UCLA since since I was born. Basically, my mom went to UCLA. My auntie worked at UCLA Hospital. So it was really like <laughs> at first I was I was committed to UCLA. And then I decommitted because I don't. It was just in the moment UCLA started losing, and I was like, I can't see myself really growing as a player at the school at the moment. And then I just opened it back up to see my see my options, want to see where I can go, because I was still a high high recruit in high school. So I'm like, all right, all right, this is this is gonna be a good decision. So when I decommitted, everybody thought I was going to USC. Yeah. It was all at, like, oh yes, he had he's guaranteed going to USC. But they still forgot that I was still talking with ASU, and I was yeah. still talking with Notre Dame. But I was. I was really what drew me back to UCLA was on on signing day. I recommitted back to UCLA on signing day. Wow! Signed, sealed, and delivered because it was like the coaches talked to me about like if you really want to build a long term legacy, we're gonna give you a chance. We're not gonna promise you you're gonna start. We're gonna give you a chance, and that's all I really was asking for. I didn't want nobody to promise me anything. I wanted to go into college and show that I'm actually a a great player, not just things being given to me. Love that, man. If I, if you know, in b- building on that, I love that story and, and and the legacy of you know with with the family and the deep relationships. If I'm a top recruit today, why is UCLA an obvious choice for me to go play ball, grow, and, and why is it an ideal home? Uh, for a recruit, the reason why I say now. UCLA is like a very good school to go to, is because we're we're on we're on a we're on an up right now with coaches. We brought in a whole new coaching staff, and then plus the last last year's season, we're building a lot better team chemistry, and we all are getting more involved in the communities, giving back. And it's like Chip Kelly, my head Chip Kelly, the head coach. He's a really good coach. Like some people say, he's not a good coach. And not a people's person, but I don't believe that because I talk to him often, and that's <laughs> me, me and Coach Chip. We have funny conversations. We 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 make jokes. We go at it in practice. Like you just want a coach that's gonna make you feel like you're you're wanted at all times, not a coach that that just recruits you and then names you as a a number when you get there. The one thing I say about UCLA is all the coaches get to know you on a personal level. They make sure that you that you need every, everything that you need in life is right there in front of you, so you won't have to struggle. Our coaches, every coaches has their ups and downs with their players, but our coaches try to limit that because at the end of the day, they they want the best players. They want the players that fit the school the best that they know they won't have to worry about often. They don't have to worry about on the regular. School is a main priority. Yeah. And play sets you up for life, not just for football. It sets you up for life after ball, life after football. Because the things that you have to have to know, the things you have to go through after football, you might have to get a job after. And the connections in the UCLA network is so is so amazing. You can it's like as soon as you get done in the league, or if you don't even make the league and you want to get a job right away. And you graduate from UCLA, the degree holds so much weight. And UCLA and LA is one of the best places in the world, even though the traffic is not that good. <laughs> hey, it's like UCLA's holds so much weight in certain areas all over the world because the degree holds so much power. And I feel like if you come to UCLA, the degree will help you so much in many ways that you think that that would not just help you, but your family and your friends. I love that, man. Yeah, you're, you're preaching to the choir. The guy to the right of me is a UCLA grad, so he loved everything you just said, man. And take it from me, a guy who just moved to Los Angeles. The traffic is brutal, man. I, I'm just getting over it. Um, Devin, you got to set the record straight for me, man. Are you six foot three or are you six foot four? Uh, uh, I really don't know. Like, some <laughs> days I, I get I – I be looking six four. And then some days I'll be six three. 
<laughs> when I put my when I put the helmet and shoulder pads on, okay, I'm six four. Like I'm naturally six four. But when I'm just in casual clothes, I'm six three. Like on every day I'm six three. Man, well, I feel that. And the reason I bring that up is you are abnormally tall for the cornerback position in the best way possible. Because I think that new mold is, you know, the Richard Sherman, the Jalen Ramsey types, the bigger corners on the outside. But you're big enough to, like, play, you know, outside possession receiver. And I know you're talented enough to have been an awesome receiving prospect as well. What made it defense over offense for you at the end of the day? Because, man, you probably could have played either one. So when I was in high school, I didn't really transition the corner to defense until like my junior year of high school. My freshman, sophomore year, I was a receiver. I didn't like defense. I wanted to score. And I was really <laughs> I just knew how I just had good ball tracking skills. So I just knew how to find the ball. But my coach Anthony Brown told me that plays for that coaches for ground zero. Square technique system. That's my guy right there. If you guys need, if you guys want to get at him. For, at Anthony Brown. Yeah, we love he's, that mug. He's the man behind the, behind the, by the plan. He, <laughs> he got me. He got me to see like, you're gonna be tall. He said the league is gonna want tall corners. And he said, yeah. if you buy in, I can make. He said you can make anything that you think, anything that you imagine become true. He said, Devin, you can be an All-American. He said, you can become an All-American. He said, you can get – he said, you can have 20-plus offers. He said, you can get your dream school. And then literally, he said, all you have to do is buy in. I bought in. Everything became a reality. I was an all -Amer Under Armour All-American. I was – I was – uh, I just got put up in my school for – with All-Americans, with Robert Woods, Dory Jackson. My name's on the, in the, on the board in the school. He said, all that you'll get. And I was just like, crazy how what he said it to me. I, at first, when you're sitting there, when you're young, you're like, this man just blowing smoke up me. Like, he just telling me <laughs> but I want me to come train with him. But when it really happened, I was like, wow. And then living everybody's dream, playing as a true freshman, being yeah. a not for a freshman All-American, uh, having a great season. Being on a team now, being on a winning team, being on a team that went from having a losing record consecutively every year to becoming, then, then playing on a team that went eight and four his freshman year. Then very, just contributing in a lot of ways like that most people want to do as a true freshman. I've lived it and I'm very happy to be in that experience. I think Coach Norwood, Coach Chip, all the coaches, Coach Foster, all the coaches that was there, they helped me in a way that made me a better player because they just gave me an opportunity. Oh, yeah, man. Dude, that's amazing and a great story. And, and you know, you, you spoke about kind of the 8-4 and four season and, and the turnaround, and, and 21 was just such an incredible year for UCLA to, to get things right and get things right moving in, in, in the direction that we wanted to go. And I think there's still another step to take. And, and you'd probably yeah. agree where we can go from eight and four to that next step. And I think a lot of folks are looking at the secondary as an area where we can really make that jump to, to be elite. And how do you see this upcoming season, D, in terms of Bill McGovern, a new voice on defense? And, and how do you see kind of that unit? And, and what are your expectations for yourself as well as collectively with that unit and with this new voice in Bill McGovern? <laughs> so with, with our new coach Bill, with, with our new coach Bill McGovern, he's really, really good. I love, I love the coach. He, he's made it to where I literally can be me. Like, all how he how he coaches. He's very interactive with the players, and he doesn't just he gives everybody a chance. I like that, and he lets me be me. Like I just said, he lets me be me. <laughs> I've been practice talking trash, having <laughs> dancing. Me and Coach be out there dancing together, cause it's like we have we're just having fun and we make. Cause he's told me that if you're not having fun, then what are you playing for? Right. What's the point of playing yeah. if you're not having fun? You want to make you want to make every play your best play, every moment, the moment that you want to live in for the rest of your life. And I feel like with him, he's been. 
he's been on me heavy. Like that's he pushes me even harder than I normally do technique wise. I'd be more I'd be more consistent with my technique. I finish throughout I finish all the way throughout routes a lot better. And I recognize plays a lot better. And then I feel like with my role in the secondary this year, being a returning player, playing a lot as a true freshman, this is gonna help me lead our defense. Mm. Lead our defense in a positive way. Cause this year I have everybody's everybody's been saying I have all the hype coming back, all the hype coming back on the campus since I'm only being a sophomore and my name has so holding so much buzz on for the for the team. And I'm planning on just I'm planning on just having a breakout season that I I want to put UCLA on the map to where everybody knows that Pac-12 teams is not just a finesse type of league. I want to show that the Pac-12 has the be- has one of the best has the best DBs, best coverage, has the best run de- has the best run defense, best pass defense, has the best offense, has the best I want to I want to be that player that makes a difference in UCLA's legacy this year. And the teamwork that we have this year, I feel like it's going to be amazing because the deep, the whole defensive back group has came together a lot more. We're more in unison. We all play to our abilities, to our abilities to help each other. When we see somebody messing up, we help each other out, not just in a negative way, also in a positive way. We make sure that, Everything that we do has a purpose. Mm-hmm. We watch together. We train after practice together. We critique everything to the littlest things. Cause it's like at the end of the day, the little things matter when you're playing. Cause how you start, how you start off on a, the beginning of the play determines how you're gonna probably finish the play. If you start off low, you're gonna finish low. If you start off high, you're gonna finish high in the play. And being being like not even not like a team captain, but being a, a leader in the secondary, just being like a role model mm-hmm. to all the all the new people that's coming, all the new players, keeping my energy high. And I, I project myself this season as as one of the top corners to be one of the top corners in in the corn in UCLA history and be one of the top corners. And also to to put myself to create a bigger name for myself. So People that understand that you can, you can literally have a good, have a great year last year, and then come back and do the same thing again, but even better than how you did it. Love yeah, man. D, you got us ready to run through a freaking wall right now, dude. I'm Absolutely. so fired up after hearing that. Um, D, last serious question I got for you, and then we're gonna play like a fun speed round where I just ask you like, what's your favorite movie or you know things like that. The last serious question I got for you, because you're my breakout player, not only for UCLA, but for the Pac-12 on the defensive side of the football. I want to know, in your eyes, who has impressed on the defensive side of the ball? Give us a name to watch out for this year on the defensive side of the football and on the offensive side of the football, because you're competing with these guys and against these guys in practice every single day. Uh, On the defensive side, uh, Jalen Davies. Oh, yeah. Jalen Davies. Uh, Stephen Blaylock, my senior, yeah. and Mo, Mo Osling and Azizi Heron. The, the secondary, man. Let's go. I'm, I believe in the secondary. And then also Ale Kaho. Yeah. Ale. Those guys are really going to have been performing well. Blay's coverage has been, has been wet, has been really going through the roof this year. We train so much together with it. Me and Davies go way back. And I've seen he's came a long way since he's transferred in from Oregon. His consistency has gotten better. And Mo, Mo just got moved to safety. But Mo's instincts and how he breaks on the ball downhill has been amazing. And Ale, Ale's just getting back from an injury. But Ale is going to be that dog that comes downhill. Yeah, man. And he's laying that and laying the wood. But on offense, and on offense, Zach Charbonnet. Oof. Zach, Carver, you know Zach's always gonna be Zach. Problem, problem, Zach, bro. problem. Then you got Jake Bobo, the grad transfer from Duke. Jake's a very Jake Bobo is a very good receiver. He knows how to work his body and go up and make aggressive catches. And he's a very good in and out of his break receiver. Mm. We got Titus that just transferred in. Titus is gonna be a problem. 
Titus is actually really good. Like he's one of the receivers you'd be like, okay, what is how is he gonna how is he gonna come off the ball? How's he gonna stem me? Titus just loves to get open, and Titus is a very creative type of route runner. And then also you have DTR. You know, DTR is planning on coming with some hot this season. And I believe Ooh, yeah. my QB. So DTR gonna do what he has to do. With also who else? Who else is gonna ball out this season that I know? Uh little Kaz Allen action right there. You think oh, Kaz? Crazy. Kaz, they <laughs> yeah. Kaz. Kaz is supposed to do really good. And uh our line, offensive line, the whole offensive line has gotten way better this year. Adding new prospects. We just got Jalen from Oregon. Yeah. Offensive yep. line is supposed to do really good. The D lineman is supposed to do really good too. The defensive yeah. line better, even though we've lost players. But the players that we've brought in, the two twins. Murphy the, twins, yeah. Them, those dudes are crazy. Those dudes are dogs. Then hey. the secondary, like Will Nemo, has gotten way better. John Humphrey, Isaiah Newcomb. They're all those players. I feel like the secondary this year is has gotten way better in total because we we communicate a lot more. We understand. D, I can tell off the rip that you are a phenomenal teammate. I asked for one name from each spot, and you shout out was, was, the whole entire starting roster, man. Devin Kirkwood, teammate of the year. I'm petitioning for it right now. Devin, are you ready for the speed round? We've done yeah. this with Quinn Lake, Sean Ryan, Alec, all these dudes. Okay, the first question of the speed round. What is Devin Kirkwood's favorite food? Oh, bacon cheeseburgers. <laughs> bacon Ooh. cheeseburgers are fire, bro. You yeah. are in the right category with that. Favorite TV show? What are you watching these days, man? Favorite TV show? Anime. So it would Ooh, be yeah. it would be a uh, Demon Slayer, but on the low, it's called Goblin Slayer. There's another one. It's a very Ooh. good anime, Goblin Slayer. Dude, you might have to send me the link to that after this conversation. I've never seen it. Big anime guy. Favorite musical artist? Who do you listen to pregame to get you pumped and just casually just chilling? Uh, pregame? Oh. Who gets I you fired would, up, man? Who gets you fired up for the game? I would say Blue Boys Clan, but I'd say – but Meek Mill. Meek Mill oh, knows yeah. Right. Meek Mill knows how to get right. But Great for times like this to shine like – man, come on. It is the <laughs> Eagles walkout song, bro. Come oh, on. Yeah. You know, fire, fire. I love me some Meek Mill. Dream uh, vacation spot, man. Where, vacation. like, you can go anywhere in the world. You're given a a ticket, you know, all expense paid. Where are you going and why? I want to go to Italy. Ooh, oh, yes, I wanna go to Italy. I want to go. I just that's somewhere I've never been, and I feel like it would be like a great experience for me. My dude, Jamal will have to give you the recommendations. He actually just went there on his honeymoon, so he is uh, uh, very familiar with you. Anything you need in terms of planning for Italy, I'm your guy, man. No worries. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Two more I got for you, man. Favorite non-football athlete? Favorite non-football athlete? Uh, favorite non Oh, uh, It was Kobe. Kobe. Oh. Kobe was my non football athlete that was he was he's the guy man he's la he's la, LA through and through the world. and also one more nipsey yeah nipsey, oh. nipsey was play some nip man pre-game yeah. hey, nipsey hustle was that guy blue laces man that one gets me going in the gym man love love me some nip and then the last question i got for you the player you want to model your game after ah uh, the player the player I want to model my game after, Richard Sherman, the Legion of yeah. Boom. That, That's who I see for you, D, oh. man. And, you know, that pick you made in Washington, yeah. very eerily similar. I mean, you made that pick, you know, less than 20 miles from Richard Sherman doing his business against the Seahawks. Devin Kirkwood, ladies and gentlemen, what a blast it was to have you on the show. Buddy, you got to come on again soon. I had an awesome experience. Thank you. i love to come on again soon. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, D. Ruin Bible, we are out.